life on the planet This one straight to a boy neck You better praise it no connect Left by a shake and a fret And your P45 if you can it <laughs> Fire red and dead Me God I'm your host L and it's the hottest on the planet Fire Station I'd like to take this time to welcome Mr. Sterling God bless Please tell the Firewood family a little bit about, no, tell the Firewood family about your journey as a DJ. Wow, very interesting. Where shall I start? Well, um, I first started doing um, house parties um, around Norbury, South London. Yeah. Um, it all started in a, in a house where, you know, the, recent, the person who I'm going to talk about, he recently died. You know, he was put to rest last week. Yeah. But it all started really in his house on North Bar Road. Um, for the age of what, 14, 15, we used to go to the house, socialise, enjoy ourselves. But, you know, being young, we want to enjoy ourselves. So the house party started there. But I started out as an MC. I used to MC on house and, and garage. Um, had a lot of links with people in the business, all the MCs, knew them all, you know, from Clapham Judge. I could go over to the, you know, for the artless crew, you know, so solid, you know what I mean? So, you know, those guys would influence me based on what they was doing at the time. But um, we was doing it a lot in the house parties, you know, spitting on the microphones of the house and carriage. And then before I knew it, it started growing. Well, then I came away from it a little because obviously I was, you know, I was a football at the time as well. Yeah. But then as you know, sometimes in life things happen, you have to address them, deal with them. And then all of a sudden I found myself a few years later um, playing in another house party further up the road. Different set of folks. You know, and um, I just had my little CD decks yeah. at the time, and they said to me, "We want to have a party, etc." And then I bought my little mini deck, and it started from there. Okay. But at the time, I was selling CDs. Um, another person, he's no longer with us. Um, my journey started with him on selling CDs back in 2002 in Brixton. I used to sell a whole heap of CDs down the front line, so I had all the latest music. So I just built up my catalogue of music. Before I knew it. You know, everything just started to grow. And then obviously, um, a lot of people might say to me, where did the name Mr. Styley come into place? Well, I used to wear a lot of bright clothes. And um, I used to have a style of my own. So people, yeah. they would look at me and say, this brother's kind of different. Because yeah. I was, I was like a young person, but an old man shoulder, you know? Yeah. So I was around a lot of elder people at the time. Um, people that was, you know, going through their things in life, but they know how to enjoy themselves. So I then decided to launch, um, the sound which I call True Colours after a few years, I tried to launch it. I launched it in May 2005, which was based on me doing it in, in his house on North Bar Road. We used to call it the 185 Club, yeah? <laughs> yeah? And that is where True Colours started. Okay. And um, obviously, after you know messing around on the decks there, we're back in like 2002, mm -hmm. I was doing it, you know, just a little few house parties, etc. But then it grew, and all of a sudden, our bookings was coming in, yeah. and I said, you know, I've got to call it a, a sound, and I did. Yeah. So I invested in some speaker boxes, etc. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a sound now. Mm -hmm. You know, eight-inch scoop bins, all them kind of things. So, you know, and I have to give thanks to someone who's close to me, mm -hmm. calling me uncle, Mr. Fix It, mm -hmm. who helped me build True Colours. Okay. You know, and um, before I know it, you know, Mr. Stiley's there, then you know, it's just developed from there, really. What did your family think about the about your career choice? Well, you know, coming from a black family. <laughs> Um, you know, family want the best for you. You know, my granddaughter was a person there. He wasn't really into the, he was into the music, should I say, but not into doing it as a career because he always said that must be a hobby. Um, and I, I agreed with him on that, you know, because obviously, you know, the elders coming from the Caribbean here, they always had to find a trade, and that's what my granddad was about. My dad was the same thing, and they was always telling me to do better, etc. But you know, when you're young, you're not thinking like that. You're thinking, well, you're in the zone, let me do what I gotta do. But I, um, you know, respect to my granddad, God bless his soul, no longer with us. But he saw my progression in the music game, so did my dad. And before I knew it, all that hobby business was put to a side now. Because I became useful to them. <laughs> Which was, i.e., play at all the house parties, birthday parties, dances, etc. Because my dad then would put on a few dances himself, um, and I was the DJ. So. Yeah. What inspired you to become a DJ? Who, what or who inspired you? So to be honest with you, I used to listen to um, Choice FM, all those stations there from when I was in primary school. Mm. But um, I always loved music. Um, 
And I always said to myself, you know, I never saw myself being a DJ because yeah. we always used to listen to all the DJs on the circuit when we was young. Because yeah. obviously when you was on, when we were back in like 94, 95, when we was leaving uh, primary school, yeah. them times the choice was the biggest thing, you know? Yeah. And all the DJs and the scene, Daddy Ernie, Commander B, the list goes on the names, yeah? yeah. And we was listening to these guys here. Yeah. And if you'd have said to myself, what, 20 years later, you'd be playing alongside these guys or be where they are, I'd have probably said to you, no. You know? Them. Or, yeah, that's right, you know? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So it developed from there, really, you know. Do you believe in the Most High? I certainly do. And how does he affect your work? Very interesting. Well, obviously growing up, you know, if you reach a certain age, sometimes society can take you away from what you're doing, mm. you know. And for me, uh, you know, I had, a, I had a crazy teenage life, mm. good and bad. Yeah. Um, I was coming from a church background, so my family, I was in the church big time, you know, yeah. you know, singing, reading the Bible, going to all midweek, um, yeah, you know what I mean, you know, but anyway, so, um, you know, for me, obviously, you know, getting yourself into a few problems later on in then in life, you have to learn the hard way, you know, and I did, but I give thanks to Almighty that um, I was, what they say, given a second chance, yeah. and um, sometimes you don't get them chances there, so, thankfully for myself, I avoided, you know, the Royal Majesty services, <laughs> so I was able to find my feet with music, you know, and that is what's made me, I would say, be a better person yeah. and, and try to encourage others and push them in the right direction, you know, because it's not easy. Yeah. How did you move from being a DJ to being a promoter? You know, funny you ask me that, because somebody else asked me that the same question. Yeah. Well, being a young DJ like myself, um, when I came onto the circuit, when I say the circuit, I say, I would say the black people circuit of playing music for our people, etc. There was loads of DJs before me, but what happened, I came on the scene, I think around about 2010. You know, I, mean, I was around, but not really doing the black people scene, you know, I was yeah. doing more, you know, cheese music, pop, etc. Yeah. 80s, 90s, for different folks, different yeah. areas, you know, I mean, different backgrounds. So when I came into the area of playing music for our own people then, that happened, so I'll say about 2009, 2010, and I saw what was happening, I was thinking, no one ain't giving nobody a chance right now. You know, I went to a lot of the DJs, I went to radio stations, etc. I even went to the biggest station, which I ended up being on, which was Vibes, you know, situations happen now, you know, I was knocked back, you know. Um, do I blame the person for knocking me back? No, because it made me stronger and wiser. So. I always believed in myself, which was I.E. I know I'm a good DJ. You've got to believe in yourself. You don't believe in yourself, people will crush you. Yeah. So there was a lot of people around me at the time. You know, I met some people, some good people, um, New Flower, all certain people them that always said to me, Styley, you need to be on vibes, man, because you're ting ton up, you know? Yeah. And it always kept pushing me that. So I went from being, I was on a legal radio station in Brixton in 2008, mm -hmm. which was Play Vibes. Yeah. Um, they did really, really well. A lot of stuff they did in the community. Um, from Play Vibes, I went on to Metro Love. From Metro Love, I went to uh, Lightning for a short while. And then from Lightning, I went to The Rock 926. And then I ended up on, on Metro Love for a little while. And then the big move came for me, which was IE, to be on um, Vibes of Femme, which I was on there for just under seven years. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So that when that move came, you know, a lot of things happened for me. Even though I was doing what I was doing, um, I then, before I came onto Vibes, decided to do my own events yeah. because I saw we wasn't really getting a look in. Young DJ coming on the scene, no one was giving me a look in. They was probably looking at who's this guy? Because yeah. I remember back in the day, I used to go outside Porky's, used to fly on people saying, who's this guy, who's this guy, who's this guy, who's this guy? And then I kept pushing myself. Mm. And then um, I was doing a few dances at a venue down in Norbury. Um, for a little while, um, I was with my friend Darren. Then later on, my other friend took over the place, make a tea. So we were doing little small events, but you know the turnout wasn't the greatest. But I could see it had to start somewhere. Yeah. So I went from um, the small little bar in Croydon on the corner. I try to remember the name of the place there. Yeah? It was called um, oh, right by the train station. I was going to come back to you in a minute. Yeah. Um, I think I know yeah. Right. 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 It's had so many different names yeah. since my friend took over. Yeah. But. Um, from it from back then but then I went from there to Porky's and from Porky's I have to big up Scully because Scully and Mandy 
gave me my opportunities to develop on to being Mr. Styley going a bit further. So it started really mainly from Porky's. And um, you know, I was doing the Friday nights, it wasn't the greatest turn up, but I was building slowly. And then one time I said to myself, I've got to try to start getting more people in. I was getting people, but not like how it should be. So it was getting them a small place that could hold about 100 people, might have got about 30, 35 people, you know, and it was building. So I um, went on to Porky's, took on the Friday night, didn't do so great, but I met some good people. And then one time I said, you know what? I'm going to do something so crazy, which I thought, I'm going to take the gamble. But before that, I, I was doing events up in um, Love Lounge. I done one event up in there where we bought over, it was supposed to be half pint at the time, but situations happened. We was able to then get um, Morgan Heritage, Morgan Heritage, Gramps and Peter Morgan, who for me, they come and save the day to be honest with you. It was absolutely packed. When I mean ram to your can't move no more, it was ram. So then the site said to me, wow, this, this, this can work. Because all of a sudden now I've gone from little things now to something big just like that. So then after that we said, you know what, we're going to do um, Norwich Snooker, yeah. which we did. Yeah. And after big up um, Liz and Paul, you know, they gave me the opportunity there and I just did a one pound dance in there and um, did really, really well. Yeah. And all of a sudden now, I said, all right, did the one that time, they're going to do another one. And it went from um, 250 to 400, 500 people. It, then it was, yeah, yeah. I've, I've, I'm, I'm good now, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> That's why I can say I announced myself as, a, as, as people know me as a promoter now, mm. which I'll say is back in 2000 and, oh, 2012, 2013, you know? To be a say I was a solid promoter and say that, I, you know, I'm there, people can recognize me, so yeah. You are. Yeah. You've, you've, whilst being a promoter, you've, prom you've promoted a lot of artists. Yeah. What shows are most memorable to you? Very interesting on this one there. Well, <laughs> It's got to be the one probably back in uh, November 2018 when we done Freddie McGregor yes. at Alchemy Bar. Yes. Um, reason being that one, it was the last minute. We worked hard, that was alongside my good friend Mr. Barry Goldfinger. Yes. And th the atmosphere, I, I, I said, I don't think we're going to get anything like that again. You yes. know, because how it was done, you know, the vibes, the energy, and what Freddie McGregor did as well for us, singing all those songs. Yeah. It was a Thursday night, and of course you guys are there as well, yeah? yeah? So um, for me, that was a big moment as a promoter to say, I've had Freddie McGregor, and I've had him in the Alchemy Boy in Croydon. Yeah. These guys don't do like PAs too much, so to have this now yeah. shows how far I've come, you know, as a promoter, and that was also thanks to another friend as well from Stingray Records who's helped me with a lot of the artists them as well. And I've also now, you know, had I got personal relationships with a lot of the artists that I work with. So as I say, it's built up my catalogue very, very well. Yeah. And um, you know, as I was saying to anybody coming in the game, you've got to just keep, stay strong. Because yeah. there's always going to be people trying to bring you down, you know, and it's, it's never easy. Which leads me to my next question. Yeah. What, what, would you mind sharing with the Pirate family? The current struggles that you would make facing the industry. Right, the current struggles. Right. Where shall I start on this one? You know? um, from the beginning. From the beginning. Okay, the struggles that we have in in in, in, the, in the in the business. Would you say the reggae business in the UK or as a whole? As a whole. Okay. Um, I find people need to work together a lot more. You know, there's no unity. And there's a lot of egos mm. and we, we, we need to cut that out mm. you know um, and also I see things going on where um, people look at uh, and, and, and base it on colour as well mm. um, and I'm gonna say this because obviously you know people see David Rodigan, Rodigan gets a lot of props you know um, can't take it away from him and people look at it and say oh why is he getting this why is he getting that but I would say to our people again it's we that put him there so when we want to complain, we need to be putting that energy and putting that into our own and pushing it. You know, there's there's certain DJs that have done a lot in this country. You know, I'm not going to mention the names, but they've done a lot and they don't get the recognition. So what we need to do, you know, as 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 a black community, is put our energy into those doing well and push them more. Yeah, and we don't do that. And we're the first to complain and say why we're not why we're not getting this, why we're not getting that, and that, that's the first of it. You know. Um, well, it's because I said this whole matter. Um, 
Because for me as a DJ, when I look at it, um, being on a radio station that I saw being, you know, top in this in this country, I thought it could have gone further because, you know, I look at things and analyse it. I believe in pushing our very own UK artists. This is my main thing that's been for a long time. You know, some people look at it and think, oh, Stiley just come the other day, what does he know? But they'll be surprised. You know, I've been watching this thing for a very long time and I find we don't support our own like how we should. So when we're putting on these big shows, we need to, the up and coming artists coming through, we need to put them on the show. You know, show it, promote their, their, their latest song, whatever. Give people the chance, you know, because there's always artists coming through, give them the chance. But they're not getting that opportunity. Maybe one or two, but not much. You know, we're always bringing artists from Jamaica to big it up. Nothing wrong with that. Because at the end of the day, you can't stop a promoter from investing his money to do that. You can't tell a promoter who to put on his show. You can maybe speak to him and say to him, look, this is a local artist that I'm pushing right now. Give him a little 10 minutes or whatever. You know, it, it can't. And I always say to the artist, you can't always look money. Because that promoter is investing a lot of money to bring over these artists here. And these artists are demanding big boy money. It's not a little change. It's mortgage money, we call it, yeah? So um, it's very, very difficult. Um, what I would say to our very own UK artists is that keep going, keep pushing and you know I'm going to try to do more shows to promote the artists them and, and get them out there and it, 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 like I said it's not easy so I would say that we all need to work together a lot better to push and promote our UK artists not just artists from Jamaica but from here What struggles have you faced? As, what, com coming through? Yeah. Opportunities okay. because um, when I look at up when I was coming through, there wasn't a lot of people giving me the opportunity. Yeah. I can name you some of the people who gave me the opportunity. Um, like I named Scully, Mandy, um, Liz, Paul from uh, West North Stupor. Um I can also big up Granaries as well because they did give me an opportunity there too, you know, as well. So Zach and Sonia. Um, I just mentioned some of them. The radio station people then. Um, Fox, Mr. Fox, RIP. Yeah. Yeah, he gave me more than opportunity. I'm not, I'm not gonna lie, you know. Um, God bless his soul again. Um, uh, Mikey Simpson from The Rock as well gave me opportunity. Um, also, when I came onto Vibes, um, Younger Melody at the time, also Terry Don as well, because um, you know, I was working alongside him as well to be on the radio station. So, like I said, and also higher level as well, Dudley. There's so much other people's names that I can mention, but who've given me? There's not loads, but I'm just mentioning some that gave me the opportunity to, you know, exp you know, show my talents of what I've got. Because not much people was given that at all. You know, you go to hire out a venue there, you say how much? Yeah, man, you're twelve hundred pound, you know, and all them, you know, is that what? Is that with the bar? Yeah. No, man, that's just for the for the um, for the six hours. You're thinking, okay, but then the next man's getting it cheaper. Yeah. So I saw the struggles that I was dealing with. So sometimes you have to show people what time of day it is and say, you just have to what I call ram a place and then people will come to you. Yeah. Um, that's what happened because yeah. there wasn't much DJs giving me the opportunity, none at all, yeah. you know? And you know, as the big man them in the business, not much of them say, yo, Sterling, come or whatever, or some, mm. you know? And I can, this, like I said, there's names to mention, but I'm not gonna go into it, but I can say some, yeah. you know? So there wasn't loads and loads of opportunities as a young DJ coming through, yeah. you know? I kind of had to fight my way through and I still am. Yeah. You know, we're not getting the support from our, our, our fellow people yeah. as we should. Yeah. I'm getting more support from other races, you know what I mean? And it, and it's sad, you know, but I'm not going to complain because at the end of the day, God's given me a talent and I have to just keep going, you know? Okay. I know you had to struggle when you were coming up and you didn't have the support. Now you're, you're on a higher level. Yeah. How's the support? Is it the same or is it...? What, what, I, what I find right now is that I'm in a position where I, I can watch and analyze things. Yeah. yeah, I I know who's good for me and who ain't. Yeah, yeah. and you, you learn. Yeah. And there's a lot of people in the industry they're stabbing you back. You know, yeah. them them chat, even the big man and them chat. Yeah. yeah, and them chat so much. Sometimes I said to myself, you as a big man should feel shame of yourself. Yeah. You know, because we as youngers we look up to you, and this is how you're carrying on. Exactly. And we need the support from you. Exactly. You know, so the way I look at it is that. I, I just have to keep pushing, yeah. you know, and there's people around me that have given me that support, you know, for my own record label, from Kieran Pressure, Denise Peters, Lavelle, these are people that I work with, you know, yeah. and then my, on my record label as well, yeah. you know, now I've got a radio station as well, 
pushing forward. There's people close to me that, you know, people actually call me, check and see that I'm all right, give me words of wisdom to progress because they know that this business yeah. can make or break it. Yeah. Especially when you're up there, it's easy to come down here. Yeah. You know what I mean? So. Tell us about your radio station. Right, UK Pressure Radio. Well, radio station was launched in April this year, 2020. We've done it in memory of um, Douglas Sparks, aka UK Principal, who sadly passed away at the end of March, um, underlying health issues. And um, Principal was a, a major part of things I was doing as well because he was on the same radio station as me back in 2008, which was Play Vibes. But he was also an artist, but it was very influential because very encouraging. Um, Principal was a man, he'd done everything, you know? <laughs> But, you know, if you didn't know, you'd probably think, yeah, yeah, whatever. But believe in me, he did it because it all came out in the newspaper, you know? And it was very, very encouraging. Words of wisdom. Sometimes they'll ring you all crazy hours in the morning, you know? But you think to yourself, why is he really with them time there? But when they're, when they're dead and gone, you're actually missing that phone call. Exactly. You know, and sometimes, even when I talk about him, sometimes bring a little tear to my eye. But he, you know, he had a major part to play with the record label and then also encouraging the radio station because yeah. I left Vibes FM in December 2019. Yeah. Um, I left there because I thought it was time for me to move on. Too much things going on. I'm telling you to be the bigger man and walk away from it. And yeah. that's what I did. And I said to myself, you know what? You have to step up now. Yeah. And Principal said to me, Styley, you have the radio station there, my brother. Where we're coming from, people don't know. Mm. We've got the brains, we can do it. Mm. So, you know, the radio station was always in the background. It was just on, just you know, auto, auto DJ. It was just there. Yeah. What some people didn't even know, the, the station won a few awards whilst being on autopilot for online, you know. So we pushed it forward and launched it in April of this year, in memory of um, UK Principal, because um, this is what he would have wanted. And he, 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 after I left Vibes, he said, "You have to push it. You have to do it." Yeah, but it's sad that we had to wait until he passed to push it forward. So, you know, Principal was actually the main reason why. I decided it's time to, to do it. And I said to myself, you know what? Even if it break me down, I'm gonna push this radio station to be number one. Yeah. You know? So yeah. What about your recording label, record label? UK Pressure Records. Well, that was launched back in 2016. Mm -hmm. Now I've only been operating what four years now. Yeah. Um, it's doing very, very well. Got a lot of artists on the label right now. And we're progressing and um, you know people like what we're doing some may not yeah. but we try to bring you know fresh air to the business as they say yeah. because sometimes you see what's going on and you've got to try and do what you can yeah. but we're always about helping people and it's all about pushing and promoting up up and up, up, upcoming talent as well yeah, so definitely. that's what we're, we're about we're not just about ones that are in the business that we know the doors open to other artists them as well you know? so. Got two labels, UK Pressure Records and Soul Power Records. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the difference between the two is well, the genres. Yeah, UK Pressure Records we mainly do with reggae. Mm -hmm. Soul Power is more R and B and soul okay. and trap, you know what I mean? So that's what we're dealing with that. So Okay. Yeah. If you could give advice to an aspiring DJ, or even an aspiring DJ, what would you say? Very interesting. Um out of, out of promoters. There's so many, you know, and some of the guys, them, I might not speak to them on a, on a, on a, on a daily basis, but there's a lot of good promoters. But if you're talking ones that are doing the big, the big, the big shows, um, Bagger John, yeah, consistent, doing it for a while, and he's still current. So, you know, for, for me, that's that's the one who's doing it, you know, because those shows what we call the big boy money, you know, he's there up and down. You know, I do work with him now as well. Um, so alongside a friend as well, Daddy Fridge. So with him, yeah, that, those are the big shots. Yeah. Um, if you're talking, bringing over artists, you know, yeah. obviously you had Freddie Maestro before as well. But it, you know, so many have come and gone doing it, but he's still here right now. Yeah, back with John for um, the big shows there, and uh, the old twos and all the okay. places there. But if you're talking on um, dance as well, you got, I would say you've got kind of different kind of promoters because you've got ones that do the sit down dinner and dance as well. Yeah. So you've got um, Damrod, you've got um, Liver as well, he was one of the managers on Vibes as well. So there isn't a specific promoter that I'll say that 
inspires me, not a specific one, yeah. number one, because they all do different kind of promotions. Yeah. But you always have to look at what they do because you're going to learn from it. Okay. Which is, i.e., I learn from the shows, the big shows. I learn from the man doing the um, dinner and dances. Okay. Also, I learn from the guys that are doing the normal dances. You know, so there's different kind of promoters for different events. So you kind of get to learn from what they're doing, or they might turn around and, and say to you, you know what, the dance that you're doing is good. But try and get a place where you get, get it with the bar, you know? Yeah. For the encouraging, you know, for bigger things. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So if someone was interested in becoming a DJ yeah. or becoming a promoter, yeah. what would you say to them? I would say to them, um, I wouldn't just jump on the wagon and do it. Yeah. You need to kind of do your research on it. Yeah. Because some people say anybody can be a DJ now because you have the laptop and you have the two things to bring everything together. But yeah. it's a bit more to that because I would say to someone, even though you can use the laptop and whatever you can do to do it, you need to go back to basics. Because to me, to be a DJ, you have to know how to play upon vinyl. Yeah. yeah. And I started from that because I was dealing with house and garage. Yeah. And I was dealing a bit with a with a ragger back in the day. So I had to get some of my vinyls then from Scorpio Music there, Stratton, Black Adred, you know, all different places. But the vinyl is the one where you have to learn to put the needle down, know how to play. You know, not just about the mixing, but now to pick up the needle, put it down, etc. Know the track where you're gonna play. So there's a technique to that as well. You gotta know what you're doing. Mm. So that's why I see some of the, a lot of the big man them say, boy, them you just come now and then play the laptop thing. And mm. yeah, it's a quick, it's a quick technology to learn like that. But I'd always say to them, you need to go back to the basics to learn from from there because you never know there could be a day that you gotta play vinyl. So um, I would say to anybody coming through, do your research on the music game and to be a DJ um, also being a promoter because being a promoter is not easy you need to know the kind of clientele you're aiming for what kind of dance you're doing or promotion and you need to go back to basics really look at it speak to people in, in the industry who may be doing dinner and dances or corporate kind of events to know exactly what market you're targeting don't just jump into it because when you just jump into it you're going to be going around in circles and you could end up losing money so nobody wants that as a promoter exactly exactly um what artists do you listen to well, i listen to so many um Beres, sanchez cockatee i'm a reggae man you know and also like my revival as well yeah. you know uh, god bless his soul toots as well yeah. sadly passed away but and also like my d brown bob marley gregory isaac ronnie davis the list goes on so it's hard for me to say this artist is my favorite artist because i've got to meet so many of them and um you know but obviously a man for me who i've always followed obviously sanchez you know because i've been to a lot of his concerts and you know he never fails me to be honest with you you know what i mean and always roadblock of any you know what i mean consistently you know so um yeah if you're talking the reggae scene yeah, Sanchez is probably going to be my man, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, consistency. Can you share with the Firewood family what plans you have in the future? Um, well, have I got because I've got the record label, obviously, want to take it up a notch, you know, promote more artists, um, push the UK music to another level as well. Um, Obsessed and also with the soul power as well, and soul label, you know, obviously look to bring some more up and talent, up and coming talent to the label as well. Not maybe not to sign them, but for them to do some songs with us as well, you know, help to, to develop more. Because um, we're in a you know epidemic right now, it's kind of hard to do what we want to do, you know, because we was pushing, yeah, we was pushing for bigger. I had a couple of things lined up with a few festivals, you know, as well. Not everybody in my label knew them thing there, but I was negotiating with a lot of the people then, you know, for different events, etc. So things have just been put on hold. But the whole aim is to push further because I was planning a, a festival, you know, I was planning a mini festival. Um, a lot of people was asking me, was I bringing in people from abroad? But everything was in the pipeline because you've got to start and see how it goes. But that's probably for next year, maybe. Can't really plan because it's difficult times right now. So the thing at the moment is just to keep pushing a record label, um, promoting the artist then, pushing myself as a DJ, pushing UK Pressure Radar as well, and uh, you know, see if you can develop even, even further into anything else, you know? Yeah. How can the, the Fire family keep in contact with you? Very easily. You can go on my website, which is www.mrstyling.co.uk or .com. Uh, you can email me, um, styling2013 at hotmail.co.uk 
or info at mrstyley.com or .co.uk. Um, can you also email me on the record label websites as well, very easily. So ukpressurerecords at gmail.com or ukpressureradio at gmail.com. I know a lot of email addresses. Um, and you can also check out on the website as well, ukpressurerecords.com. So quite easy to find. You could just Google Mr. Styley and it'll come up. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Please feel free to make a shout out to your well-wishers. Well, my well-wishers, well, to people that support me, you know. Yeah. Thank you all for your support. It means a lot. Um, without the support, I wouldn't be where I am. I have to give thanks to my mum and dad. They've had to put out with hell for me over the years. <laughs> and my grandparents, you know. Yeah. But um, without their energy, I wouldn't have been able to push it forward where I am right now. Yeah. Because them, them few words of having a guy, yeah, just give you that energy to push forward. Um, for some good peeps them around me as well. We got care and pressure. I've big them up because it always keeps pushing me to do well. You know, and I've worked with some decent people over the years as well and who I've worked alongside. So much names to mention, but yeah. <laughs> I've got to mention them all. Um, you know, all the UK artists them that support me as well. Yeah. Because some of them do, you know what I mean? And you know, if it's not the jingles, they're always willing to help me personally. Um, also giving thanks to the Almighty for um, me being where I am because a lot of people will say to me, Stanley, how much people want to be where you are right now? Sometimes I don't look at it like that. But you know, when they're throwing what you say an empire at you, what you've got, sound system, two record labels, you know, radio station, you know, at one stage even at a, a wine bar as well, you know, which is just still developing, who knows, but my concentration at this moment in time is is, is UK pressure as a whole, you know? So um, I'm giving facts for, for that, that little empire at the moment and um, just try to push forward and try to see what more empires we can create because yeah. I believe being as a young person, you can't just put your hands in one, yeah. one thing, you know? Boom, big up fire it every time, number one. And I really appreciate you guys coming and doing my events because sometimes we don't get the opportunity to say thank you, but I'm saying it live and direct. Thank you, God bless. It's your time.